The first meta-analysis package we will review is called Ginger Ale, with Ale standing for Activation Likelihood Estimation. This is part of a suite of packages called Brain Map, which also includes the auxiliary programs Scribe and Sleuth. We will use Ginger Ale to replicate the results of another meta-analysis, and then contrast two meta-analyses to determine where there is overlap or differences between them. And to do that, we first need to briefly review the Ginger Ale interface. The Ginger Ale package can be downloaded by going to brainmap.org and choosing the version matching your operating system. In my case, I'll download the one for Macintosh. Click on the file when it has finished downloading, and then click and drag the Ginger Ale icon into your applications directory, which allows you to open the package by using your finder to search for Ginger Ale. Click on the software package result that appears, which will open the Ginger Ale interface. The radio button by default is set to single dataset, which is what we will start with. That is, we will test whether the results of different studies overlap. Not all of the studies need to use the exact same contrast. There will be differences in experimental design, as well as number of subjects and number of trials. But each study included in the meta-analysis ought to tap into the same underlying cognitive phenomenon. The field next to coordinate system specifies the template space in which the analyses will be conducted. In my case, MNI 152 or Montreal Neurological Institute. To change the coordinate space, click on Ginger Ale, then Settings, and select the radio button next to the coordinate space that you want to use. The next field, Mask Size, specifies whether to make the mask bigger or smaller. That is, to make the space of our analyses include more or fewer voxels. It may be the case, for example, that one of the studies included in your meta-analysis used a slightly bigger mask than usual, and that this in turn led to a peak activation being located beyond the edge of a more conservative mask used by other studies. Later on, you may find that the foci you want to use in your study fall outside the default more conservative mask, and you can change that here. All of the other options are mostly self-explanatory, and the defaults should be left as they are. The only other option that you may want to change is the output directory field, which by default points to the home directory. To better organize our results, create a new directory on your desktop called Ginger Ale Demo, and then select this folder as your output directory. When you are finished, your Ginger Ale preferences should look like this. Once you have closed the preferences window, you may see your changes reflected in the main Ginger Ale interface. For example, if you change the coordinate system. Passing over the foci field for now, you will see the settings field with a drop down menu showing options for different correction methods. The first one in the list, p value, is an uncorrected value applied to all the voxels, and unless you are exploring your meta-analysis data without the intent to publish, I would not recommend using it. The second option, voxel level FWE, is similar to Bonferroni correction for fMRI data. It ensures that no more than a specified fraction of ALE scores exceed a given value. Once you choose this option, you will see additional fields. The one next to voxel level FWE is your alpha level at each voxel, while the threshold permutations specifies how many null datasets will be simulated to build up the null distribution. The last field, min volume, will remove any remaining voxels that do not belong to a cluster as large or larger than the volume entered. Similar to cluster-based thresholding for fMRI data, the last option, cluster level FWE, allows you to specify the cluster forming threshold in the field next to p-value, which should be kept at 0.001. The field next to cluster level FWE, on the other hand, is the alpha threshold, 
which should be kept at the nominal 0.05 value. As with the previous option of voxel level FWE, the number of threshold permutations determines the amount of null clusters that are created in order to create a null distribution. For the purposes of this tutorial, let's stick with cluster level FWE as our correction method. You can leave the permutation as a default. For most published analyses, permutations of 1000 or more are commonly used. Once you have gathered a list of studies you want to include in your meta-analysis, you will also need to extract the foci, or peaks, for the contrast reported in the papers. There are tools on the BrainMap website designed to automate this task for you, although you can extract the peaks manually if you wish. In any case, the foci need to be formatted in a particular way, and a representative example can be found in the Ginger Ale user's manual. If we scroll down, we can see that a typical foci file requires the following fields. One, a reference space in which all of the coordinates have been reported. Note that if different studies report their coordinates in different spaces, you can convert them to the same space by going back to the ginger ale GUI and then clicking on Tools, Convert Foci, selecting the file you would like to convert, and choosing the appropriate conversion. For example, Talirac to MNI, or the reverse, MNI to Talirac. The second thing you'll need in a foci file is a list of the study's name, followed by the contrast reported in the study whose coordinates you are reporting. Next is the number of subjects in the study, and then a list of coordinates in XYZ format for each focus reported in the study. Also note that the reference space field is listed only once at the beginning of the file, and that this field, along with the fields listing the study name and the number of subjects, are preceded by two forward slashes. Each set of coordinates is listed on a separate line, while a carriage return separates each study. Let's use this example file to run a small ginger ale meta-analysis. Either transcribe or copy and paste the values into a text file using a program such as Macintosh's Text Edit. Be sure to remove the rich text formatting by selecting Format, Make Plain Text, or else Ginger Ale won't be able to read the file. This may take some time, if I copy and paste it for example, to make sure everything is in the format as what you see in this PDF file here. So I'm going to fade out and come back once it's done. Now that I have the file formatted correctly, I'm going to save it as acupuncturefoci.txt in the ginger ale demo directory. Now that you have the materials you need for the meta-analysis, open ginger ale and click file, open foci. Select the acupuncture foci file that you created, which is located now in the ginger ale demo directory, and click open. When you see a window asking you to change the coordinate system, select change to tally rack. You may have noticed that the coordinate system specified in the foci file was tally rack, and you should use the corresponding template space for the analysis. Now notice that the field next to foci displays the file that you loaded, and it has detected 12 foci across three experiments, which you can verify by reading the coordinates file. The field next to output name prefix has also been changed to the same name as the foci file, although you can modify it if you wish. Now click the compute button and wait a few minutes for Ginger Ale to calculate the meta-analysis maps. When the analysis has finished, you will see many new files in the output folder. The meaning of each output file can be found in the Ginger Ale user manual. For most purposes, you will want to use the thresholded image, which has a suffix such as C05 underscore 500, 
indicating that the image was cluster corrected at p equals 0.05 and that 500 permutations were run. When the analysis is finished, you can navigate into the directory and examine the output with any viewing software that you like. In this case, I will use AFNI. Using the MNI152-2009 template as an underlay image, you can view any of the output images as an overlay. The most useful one would be Acupuncture Foci CO5 500 clustnii which is the cluster corrected image that shows where there is significant overlap between the foci of the different studies. In this case, we can see two distinct clusters, one in the occipital lobe and one in the right frontal gyrus. For exact coordinates of the peaks of each of these clusters, you can open the spreadsheet acupuncture foci CO5 500 peaks dot XLS, which was also created in the output directory as a result of the analysis. For example, you can see each cluster and subcluster along with the peak coordinates for the peak AL score and its associated Z statistic. That's it for the basics of ginger ale. In the next video, we'll be extending what we learned here to look at a larger set of studies and replicate the effects in another meta-analysis published by Kumar et al. We'll then be moving on to contrasting meta-analysis maps to see where there's overlap and where there are differences.